unusual to hear Donald Trump speak kindly of anyone south of our southern border, but in last night's State of the Union, he had some nice words for one Venezuelan politician. Two weeks ago, the United States officially recognized the legitimate government of Venezuela and its new president, Juan Guaido. We stand with the Venezuelan people in their noble quest for freedom, and we condemn the brutality of the Maduro regime. Who is Juan Guaido? No one's quite sure yet. What's happening in Venezuela is complicated and confusing, even for the people involved. This weekend, massive crowds supporting this man. Opposition leader Juan Guaido, who's declared himself Venezuela's legitimate president, accusing Nicolas Maduro of claiming victory in a sham election. Who is the president here in Venezuela? The president of Venezuela is Juan Guaido. And that's you. It's me. Aww. I mean, I feel like we have to trust him. Dictators don't start out that cute, do they? Guaido is a complete unknown, but the people of Venezuela absolutely deserve better than Maduro. Not only did he steal an election, he's also been accused of crimes against humanity and has ties to money laundering and drug trafficking. And thanks in large part to his rule, Venezuelans are starving. The country has been plagued by a deepening economic crisis, corruption, crime, all of which have contributed to a worsening food shortage. This is what's happening in Venezuela. We're starving. We're struggling thanks to this government. It's the Maduro diet. To add insult to injury, now it's being appropriated by Instagram influencers. I can eat anything I want as long as I sneak it past the soldiers guarding the empty grocery store. Hashtag Maduro diet, hashtag positivity. Things in Venezuela are messed up, but that doesn't mean that the U.S. can unmess them, and it definitely doesn't mean we should prep an invasion. National Security Advisor John Bolton was spotted with a notepad that said 5,000 troops to Colombia which is crazy. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp also stole an election, but do you see anyone calling for us to invade Georgia again? That's right, Georgia, you guys lost the Civil War. Never, ever forget that. And Bolton, who again is the national security advisor, is openly licking his chops at the thought of getting our hands on Venezuela's oil. We're looking at the oil assets. It'll make a big difference to the United States economically if we could have American oil companies really invest in and, and produce the oil uh, capabilities in uh, Venezuela. Okay, so let's see. Obsessing about the oil capabilities of a country run by a cruel dictator with a mustache. Why does this feel familiar to me? Oh, that's right. It reminds me of Iraq. Please don't do another Iraq. The only thing we should consider rebooting from 2003 is Agent Cody Banks. <laughs> but... Perhaps the worst sign for the U.S.'s involvement in Venezuela is who we are putting in charge. Diplomat and inventor of handlebar eyebrows, Elliot Abrams. <laughs> if I were Venezuelan, I would not feel reassured by this man's presence at the helm. As a Reagan staffer, he was involved in nearly every awful thing we did to Latin America in the 80s, except for flock of seagulls hair. <laughs> Abrams was appointed by Reagan as the Assistant Secretary of State for Human Rights. During that time, he covered up a state backed massacre in El Salvador, collaborated with a Panamanian dictator who beheaded a dissenter, ensured a Guatemalan dictator could carry out acts of genocide, and was a fervent supporter of Nicaraguan rebels who carried out dozens of massacres across the country. This was all as a human rights advisor. More like human wrongs advisor. I'm sorry, what's that? I'm canceled. I understand. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Nice to know you. <laughs> no. Abrams is so awful. It's no wonder his eyebrows are trying to escape his face. <laughs> Basically, everything Abrams did in Latin America could be considered a war crime, but he was only forced to justify one, his role in the Iran-Contra deal, which was a totally bitchin' 80s scandal where the U.S. secretly sold weapons to then embargoed Iran, which then funded the Contras, who were right-wing terrorist groups in Nicaragua. He eventually pled guilty to lying to Congress about it, but he didn't seem to feel very guilty. Abrams pleaded guilty today, criminal charges. He lied to Congress. He was one of the so-called true believers inside the Reagan administration, a State Department official who believed in supporting the Nicaraguan Contras and who loudly opposed Congress when it outlawed Contra funding. 
bad blood with Congress finally caught up with it. The information withheld related to activities of the United States government regarding Central America, which at that time I believed to be proper and lawful. At the time, I believed it to be proper and lawful is an excuse for selling your own homemade t-shirts at a Maroon 5 concert, not funding an extremist group so they can do more murders. Abrams was pardoned by Bush Sr., who, I guess after having Jeb for a son, was simply prone to forgiveness. Abrams also found it chillingly easy to forgive himself. After there was a supposed cutoff of military aid to Guatemala, the State Department authorized at least 114 separate sales of pistols and rifles uh, to uh, Guatemala. Whatever Alan Nairn wants to do, Charlie, I'm not here to refight the Cold War. I'm glad we won. Maybe he's not. We're talking about a hundred, more than 100,000 murders, an entire army, many of its top officers, employees of the U.S. Uh, government. I think we have to talk, start talking about putting Guatemalan and U.S. officials on trial. I think someone like Mr. Abrams would be a fit uh, a subject for such a Nuremberg-style inquiry, but I agree with Mr. Abrams that Democrats would have to be in the dock with him. <laughs> he laughs like he just caught all the Smurfs, which would be funny, except what he's laughing about is that he was the consulting producer of a bunch of massacres, and he is never, never, ever, ever, ever going to face any consequences for it. <laughs> Having Elliot Abrams oversee our Venezuela policy is a bit like having Brian Singer direct a film about the Catholic Church. Abrams has two passions in life, ruining countries and scoffing at allowing in refugees from those countries. I have argued in the past that Salvadorans are coming for economic reasons, not political reasons. How on earth do they prove to you that they are in danger? They need to... Uh give us their story and they need to give something more than a general statement that they don't like things in El Salvador. They need to give us some facts. But isn't everybody in, in El Salvador to some extent in danger these days? There's a war going on. No, there's a distinction between an individual who can prove that he or she is a target of persecution and just somebody who'd rather live here than in El Salvador. Our immigration laws do not say that if you prefer to live here than where you came from, well fine, move here. Who's to say if those Salvadorans are fleeing the region I destabilized or if they just love New England in the fall? Tra-la-la! -la. <laughs> in 2001, Abrams joined George W. Bush's administration after taking the 90s off to play Uncle Leo on Seinfeld. <laughs> You would think that a person with aiding and covering up genocide listed on the special skills section of his resume would be politically radioactive. But Abrams is still a respected member of the DC community. Elliot Abrams, as somebody who in the Reagan administration, as I recall, uh, had the portfolio of spreading democracy around the world. Elliot Abrams, who is an experienced foreign policy expert. They brought in Elliot Abrams. This is good that they're mm -hmm. bringing sort of the moderate Republican mm -hmm. Bush foreign policy advisors in. I think that's good. It is not good. How is it so easy for guys like this? I mean, forget his awful record. My career would be over if I had this man's eyebrows. <laughs> Look. We will never make up for the things our country did in Latin America during the Cold War, but the least we can do is not send the same gang of rapacious neocons back there again. Just send Elliot Abrams somewhere else. I hear The Hague is nice this time of year. We'll be right back.